This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about gases. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the kinetic molecular theory of gases. This is going to be the fourth video on the series of six videos on this chapter. So I would recommend that you watch the previous videos before you watch this video. Now the kinetic molecular theory of gases says that ideal gases are assumed to obey the following postulates. Number one, gas particles have negligible volume. Number two, the particles are in constant motion. Number three, no interparticle interactions. And number four, the average kinetic energy is assumed to be directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas. Note that, that these postulates are not exactly true because in a real gas, molecules have finite volume and they do exert forces on each other. So the energy that an object has due to its motion is called kinetic energy and is found by Ke is equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. m is the mass and v is the velocity. So if we have said for an ideal gas, the kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy only changes with temperature so it should not change with mass. Now what changes with mass is the velocity of particles and not the average kinetic energy. So we can see that for heavier uh, gases, they have a lower velocity. However, lighter gases, they have higher velocity. But the average kinetic energy of the gas overall is going to be constant as long as the temperature is constant. The only thing that changes from one gas to another is the velocity of the gas particles. So at constant temperature, the kinetic energy is constant. However, the less massive particles will have higher average velocity than the more massive particles. Now let's discuss the Maxwell-Boltzmann speed distribution curve. The following figure will show the distribution of speeds for nitrogen gas at three different temperatures. So, now the first one was recorded at 100 Kelvin, the second one after heating the gas to 300 Kelvin, and the third one is at 700 Kelvin. So every time we can see that when the temperature increases, the average speed increases, and also the kinetic energy increases. So we can say that the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy. Now the pressure can be found using the following expression where u square is the average of the square of the velocity. Now Na is Avogadro's number, small m is for mass of each particle, P is the pressure, N is the number of mole, and V is the volume. Now looking at this expression and keeping in mind that the average kinetic energy can be calculated by Avogadro's number multiplied by half mv square or mu square. So using these two expressions and rearranging them, we can get that the PV over N is equal to 2 over 3 kinetic energy or average kinetic energy. Now remember from the ideal gas law, PV is equal to an RT, so PV over N is going to be equal to RT. So we can rearrange this expression to be RT is equal to 2 over 3 kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy is going to be equal to 3 over 2 RT. Now remember, R is a constant, so therefore the only factor that changes the kinetic energy is the temperature. Now looking at the expression of the root mean square velocity and the two different expressions of the average kinetic energy, we can say that the average square velocity is equal to 3RT over Avogadro's number multiplied by M. And taking into consideration all these expressions, we can say that the root mean square velocity is equal to the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass. Now, from where did we get the molar mass? It's the Avogadro's number multiplied by mass. So note that in this expression, the molar mass should be expressed in kilogram per mole, and R should be in the unit of joule per Kelvin mole. And it's equal to 8.3145 joule per Kelvin mole. I hope this video is helpful to you. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.